Hello everybody, it's Fu here, and oh boy do we have a fun strategy to try out today. I'm looking at Annihilate, the evolution of Primeape, which gains a ton when it evolves. So it gains the ghost typing, which is fantastic with fighting, because the only things that resist or are immune to ghost are weak to fighting, so it's really, really strong. It gained a ton of bulk, it gained a bit of attack, and then it lost a bit of speed, which is a real shame because Primeape's base 105 speed was a great speed tier to hit, and base 90 for Annihilate is not so good. But on top of all that, it did get Rage Fist, a base 50 power ghost type move, which increases by base 50 power each time Annihilate is hit by a damaging move. So I wanted to make a team to maximize the damage out of Rage Fist. But how powerful can Rage Fist actually get? Well, that's where Mouse Hold comes in. I wanted to test whether Mouse Hold's Population Bomb a move that can hit up to 10 times could increase the power of Rage Fist to its maximum. For Population Bomb to hit 10 times consistently, you have to give Mouse Hold the Wide Lens. And also, Population Bomb is a normal type move, so to actually hit a Ghost type Annihilate with this move, you either have to Terrastalize Annihilate, or give it the Ring Target item, which allows you to be hit by moves that you're usually immune to. So, I decided to do a test. I've got Wide Lens, Mouse Hold, next to a Ring Target Annihilate, and I'm going to use Population Bomb into Annihilate, and then use Rage Fist into a Grimmsnarl, which will be able to resist the Rage Fist. The idea behind this is just to gauge the damage, because hopefully we can see how much damage Rage Fist will do after 10 hits, and then we can see if the damage is capped at a certain level. So here you can see the Grimmsnarl is just going to go for a fake tears as I go for the Population Bomb with my Mouse Hold and it's going to hit all 10 times. Now I think it's quite important to note that despite this Mouse Hold definitely not being an offensive Mouse Hold, it doesn't have like attack EVs, it doesn't have anything like that, it's doing a ton of damage to my Annihilate. It's not Technician, Mouse Hold also has a Technician ability, it's not Technician. It did a ton, so if you wanted to use this strategy, it would be doing a lot of damage to Annihilate, you need to bear that in mind. Anyway, the Rage Fist is going to go off after 10 hits, the theoretical base power of 1050 does about 95% to Grimmsnarl. Now, I needed to see if there was a damage cap in there somewhere, so I'm doing the same test again, apart from instead of Population Bomb, I'm now using Beat Up with my Mouse Hold. I've got six Pokemon on my team, so it will hit six times, and then we can go for Rage Fist into Grimmsnarl again to see if it does any less damage than Population Bomb, because you're hitting four less times, so you'd expect it to do less damage. So when we go for the Rage Fist and we can see the damage, it actually does a very similar amount of damage to the 10 hits. So there's obviously a damage cap in there somewhere. So I want to work out where that damage cap is. So we're doing beat up with five hits now to see if this does less damage than six. So we've hit five times with the beat up again. I've already got five Pokemon on my team. And then I can go for Rage Fist into the Grimmsnarl to see if this does less damage. So how much damage does it do? It does less damage than the six hits. So that implies that six hits is the maximum damage that Rage Fist can hit. Six hits equals 300 additional damage onto the base 50, meaning that the Rage Fist cap damage is 350. Not 1050, unfortunately, although that would be a bit too ridiculous. Not 300, I've seen that thrown around quite a lot. I think people think it might be 300 because Houndstone's last respects move was 300 base power when all of your team had fainted. So I think a lot of people assumed it was the same, but it's not. So it's base 350 power, more powerful than Houndstone that's just been banned in Smogon, which is pretty crazy. So you can get 350 power. So what are the implications for this in team building? Well, here's the team that I came up with. I'm not using Population Bomb. I think a wide lens mouse hold is not consistent because it can be faked out. It can be knocked out before it get, gets its attack off. What I want to use is beat up instead, even in 4v4 doubles, which is the VGC format, and you, you only hit beat up four times, but you still get a base 250 power Rage Fist, and it gives you some other options. So I've got a beat up Sneasel here, and I've got a Terror Ghost Weakness Policy Annihilate. If I go for beat up into Annihilate, as I said, I'll get a base 250 Rage Fist, and I'll activate Annihilate's Weakness Policy. 
This works out to be more powerful than if you just got those six hits off onto Annihilate. That would be a base 350 Rage Fist, but plus two attack and a 250 Rage Fist is more powerful. Why it's also superior is because Sneasel is a great support Pokemon. It's got inner focus, so it can't be faked out. It's got Focus Sash so that it can't be knocked out before it gets its attack off. It's slightly faster than Mouse Hold. And really importantly, it has Icy Wind for speed control because Annihilate's biggest weakness is probably its base 90 speed. It's not so fast. But after Icy Wind support, it can outspeed a lot of the meta. So I thought I would take you into some battles to demonstrate this team and then I can talk a bit more about the intricacies of the team. So in this first battle, I'm going up against a really cool looking team Team with lots of scary Pokemon. Dragonite's having its heyday at the moment because it can terrestrialize into a normal type and effectively get stab extreme speed, which is super strong. I just choose to lead with my dedicated lead, which is Sneasel and Annihilate. So let's get into this. I'm battling Ja or Ya, and they send out Grimmsnarl and Dragonite to start with, as I send out my Annihilate and my Sneasel. And on the first turn, I'm debating what I want to do. Now, I know Dragonite can terrestrialize into a normal type which may be immune to Rage Fist but I thought that was super unlikely because it's facing off against a fighting type and also my fighting type is immune to the extreme speed so it wouldn't make sense for Dragonite to actually terrestrialize just yet but that means that I can try to target a Rage Fist into it and I'm not exactly sure what the Grimmsnarl would do it might want to try to paralyze my Annihilate but I'm quite confident that Annihilate can take at least one hit from this Dragonite. So I just want to try to get my combo off. I am going to terrestrialize into a ghost type. I'm going to get that weakness policy and we can try to see how much damage we can do on this first turn. And let's just hope we don't get knocked out by like a random offensive Grimmsnarl sucker punch or something. That would be super random. But fortunately, they just go for fake out. Now this is showing Sneasel's power because it does have inner focus, so it won't get flinched which is really cool. You could use a different beat up user and give them the Covert Cloak, which might have the same effect. But Sneasel can also have the Focus Sash, so it's really strong in that respect. So you can see here, we're going for the beat up. We're getting the 250 base power Rage Fist and Weakness Policy activation on turn one. And we can fire off that Rage Fist right now. So we don't know what ability this Dragonite has. Maybe it has the multi-scale that might allow it to live. But it doesn't, it does just faint. I'm thinking Dragonite is probably in a focus because it allows it to ignore, intimidate and fake out, which is really strong. But it could have been multi-scale because I'm pretty sure a uh, terror boosted plus two attack base 250 power Rage Fist would have actually taken out a multi-scale Dragonite too. It's just that strong. So now the Fluttermane comes in and it has the booster energy, but interestingly, its special attack increases, which implies to me that this is a modest uh, Fluttermane. Now, that means that my Sneasel may be able to outspeed it. I wanted to check this first turn, so I just want to protect with my Annihilate while I get a speed drop on the Fluttermane, and that will ensure that my Annihilate can outspeed the next turn. I'm not worried about my Sneasel fainting this turn because I do have the Focus Sash. So I'm just gonna go for the Icy Wind and you can see that I do outspeed the Fluttermane. So that's why I would suggest you run a Timid Fluttermane. I've got a Fluttermane on this team and I do run Timid just because there are so many Fluttermanes running around and if you don't match them in speed, they'll just knock you out. Um, so I got the speed drop off. Now I can go for a Rage Fist into the Flutter Main. They've got the Reflect up, but Rage Fist is definitely going to take out the Flutter Main at the moment. It's super effective. I'm plus two attack. It's a really high base power. I contemplated going Helping Hand, but thought that's probably overkill. I don't need to do that. Um, so I decided to just go for um, a switch into my Amoongus because I know that my Annihilate will outspeed this this Fluttermane. I've seen that my Sneasel outsped last turn and I've got a speed drop on it. They are going to terrestrialize something which is kind of interesting and it's going to turn out to be a very tight uh, Fluttermane. But that is so that means that removes their weakness to Rage Fist but it's still neutral and we've just seen it decimate a Dragonite. I guess they've got their Reflect up now so we can see if the Fluttermane can survive with the uh, re reflect but no it can't it just gets demolished <laughs> and so that goes down 
and we've got the uh, Amoongus in right now, so we've got potential redirection support. We can put things to sleep. The Grimmsnarl went for a spirit break into my mushroom. I guess they were hoping to survive with a Fluttermane and take my Annihilate out with a Shadow Ball while they um, did massive damage to my Sneasel with Spirit Break, but that didn't work out for them because Annihilate is just that strong. Now they can bring in their Sizzle, which is definitely a bulkier Pokemon, but as I said, I've got Spore and Rage Powder support, so things are looking good. Even if I don't take out the, the Scissor behind Reflect, um, my Annihilate should survive this turn and should be able to um, have another go next turn, so I'll just go for Rage Powder here. Unfortunately, the opponent cancels the battle at that stage, but I'm pretty sure I had a good matchup. I still had Fluttermane in the back to deal with the Grimmsnarl. So that's the first match, and I have to say that showed off the strategy to its best. I thought that was a really good example of showing off what I labbed and, and tried to make work. But I have to say this is not the most consistent strategy. There are just so many really fast and powerful Pokemon that are super scary and some surprises that will catch you off guard. So I want to show you another match which demonstrates how things can get a little bit chaotic and you need to be adaptable. My opponent here has some really interesting aspects. So they've got <laughs> they've got Coridon, which is kind of scary, and that will be able to activate their incredibly scary Roaring Moons ability, as well as their Great Tusks ability, giving them a stat boost. They also seem to have a potential Trick Room element with Skeledurge, Great Tusk, and Oranguru, which can have like a Trick Room team. So I wanted to lead with my usual lead because they do have anti-Trick Room plays while also being able to do the setup. So let's play this match against Hotpaw, who has an awesome trainer card with a sleeping Oranguru. I really, really appreciate that. I just appreciate seeing Oranguru. It's a very good Pokemon. Uh, so we've got Oranga in Great Tusk lead, so this is screaming Trick Room to me. I think that this makes a lot of sense to be a Trick Room team. So I'll do my anti-Trick Room play, which is just faking out into the Great Tusk to prevent the massive damage that it could potentially put out and then taunting the Oranguru. I'm really hoping that I'm not gonna see a Mental Herb Trick Room set up here because I didn't really bring the counterplay to that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go for this play that will hopefully allow me to survive the turn and prevent Trick Room so that I can have a chance at my setup the following turn. So we get the taunt off on the Oranguru. Great Tusk does flinch, which is great. They didn't have the Covert Cloak. And then Oranguru goes for the Psychic, which I did not predict. Fortunately, Annihilate can take that, and because it's super effective, I get my weakness policy activation already without having to do anything, which is great, but I'm kind of at too low HP to be able to do my self beat up strategy, which is a shame. Rage Fist is base 100 power, so I don't need to worry about the power of Rage Fist. It's not gonna get much higher than that because I can't take up many more hits, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not a perfect scenario to be in. Right now, Great Tusk is looking very scary. If I allow it to get an attack off, it's gonna do a ton of damage. Although I know that if I allow Oranguru to attack, it's taunted, it's just gonna go for that Psychic into my um, my Annihilate. But I kind of wanted to remove the Great Tusk because I didn't have good answers to it on the rest of my team. So I'm just gonna go for a Helping Hand and a Close Combat here at plus two attack because of my weakness policy. That should be easily enough to take out the Great Tusk. So. I know the Great Tusk is really bulky and I wasn't confident that just a plus two close combat would take it out so I felt like I needed to go for the Helping Hand and to be honest Sneasel wasn't going to be doing too much to the um, the Oranguru anyway so I may as well have made this play to just guarantee that I get that knockout. As you can see the Psychic does come out and Annihilate goes down and this is this is just demonstrating how chaotic things can get in the match. Like Annihilate, which is my primary sweeper, has gone down already. I'm now bringing out Grimmsnarl, which has a really good matchup against the opponent's team, but I've got two not very offensive Pokemon. They're both kind of intended to support Pokemon right now. Coridon does come out, so as I said, I knew that Grimmsnarl had a good matchup against the team. Um, if they brought Roaring Moon out, again, I would have a good matchup, um, but it's just it doesn't have any attack investment so it won't be doing the most damage uh, but i can go for a spirit break into coridon which is four times super effective and i can helping hand just to make sure that i do as much damage as possible coridon is very scary and probably won't be allowed in the vgc format when it comes out uh, but for now uh, we can we can see it in action doing some scary things it actually terrestrializes but fortunately it terrestrializes into the fighting type meaning that its fighting type moves will do ridiculous damage 
and it also means that it's not like four times super effective to spirit break anymore but at least it is still weak to spirit break which is good so they're going for the collision course into my sneasel as i said i've got the focus satchel which is really nice so i'm able to hang on there and sneasel really just helping with the damage output right now as i can go i think i go for this oh no the oranguru out speeds and goes for the thunderbolt demonstrating that it does actually have coverage to hit my dark types i was wondering if it was just going to be a sitting sitting duck but it can do something so the Coridon's taken down really low. It doesn't actually get knocked out because it terrestrialized, which is a little bit of a shame. Now I'm thinking, what do I want to do? I have Sucker Punch, but I'm really not confident that it will take the Coridon out. So I'm thinking maybe I should Thunder Wave and then my um, Fluttermane in the back can take it out. But what I decide to do is go for a Sucker Punch and a Helping Hand, hoping that the Coridon will not see this coming and we'll just go for another attack and I can take it out before it gets that attack off. So here's the helping hand. I, I really didn't think that Sucker Punch would take it out without the helping hand. And we go for a Sucker Punch. Again, my Sneasel's not gonna be doing much damage or doing much at all to the Oranguru. So I may as well be making this play into the Coridon, taking that down before it can do any more damage. And the Oranguru goes for Instruct here actually trying to get Coridon to move again because it did outspeed my uh, Grimmsnarl so it kind of makes sense that they were trying to do it but trying to take out my Sneasel and then do a massive hit on my Grimmsnarl but fortunately that wasn't the case so right now um, I think that I'll just try to get another Sucker Punch off on Skeledurge I contemplated maybe going for Spirit Break it's resisted but reducing Skeledurge's special attack might be helpful but then it does have Torch Song, which is boosting its special attack, so I don't really gain much out of that. I may as well just go for damage at this stage. So I'm just going to go for another Helping Hand Sucker Punch, turning my Grimmsnarl into the offensive powerhouse that it needs to be in this moment. Sneasel really just showing its supporting role here. It's It's got a lot of capacity to do that, which is, I, I just think it's a really cool support Pokemon that you don't see too often. So Sneasel's going to go down here to a Torch Song as Skeledurge does get a special attack boost. But I've taken it down pretty low, which is nice. And I can bring in my Fluttermane now. They, the opponent got their speed tiers a bit mixed up, so they thought that they would be able to instruct the uh, Skeledurge. But I don't think it would have changed too much. They maybe would have got a Torch Song off into my Grimmsnarl instead of Sneasel last turn. But I can just go for a Shadow Ball into the uh, Skeletor Dirge and try to attack into the Oranguru this turn. But the opponent cancels the battle there. So you can see that one got a lot less clean. The Annihilate strategy is not super consistent as a strategy. So you need to play around that. But it's a really fun one to try out. As I said, this team was just all about maximizing damage on the Rage Fist from Annihilate. So looking at the team, let me just explain a little bit more about it. As you saw, the main lead is Sneasel Annihilate so that you can get the beat up Rage Fist off if you want to. But there are plenty of times when you might want to fake out close combat or use the Icy Wind with Sneasel while you protect with Annihilate just to get that speed control so that you can then deal damage with Annihilate on the following turn. And really the anti-trick room strategy is uh, fake out and taunt on the Annihilate. But be careful, there are some Mimikyu's out there that are running like Mental Herb. In those cases, what you actually want to do is beat up into the Mimic Q so that you can break its disguise and do a little bit of damage past its disguise. And then you can go for just a base Rage Fist off Annihilate. Even at base 50 power, that should take out the Mimic Q from there. In terms of the rest of the team, uh, we've got two other supporting Pokemon. So we've got Grimmsnarl, which is another fake out user. It's got more speed control with Thunder Wave. And then we've got Spirit Break and Sucker Punch. With the Steel Terra type here, if you actually preserve that for Grimmsnarl, Steel Terra type just gives it a better matchup against Fluttermane. It can beat Fluttermane if it does terrestrialize into a Steel type. And then I've also got Amoongus, which is kind of standard. Uh, Clear Smog is there as a way to remove Don Dozo's stat boosts, which is really important. And uh, Rage Powder is just such a great match with Annihilate. Once you've got the Rage Fist all boosted up, if Sneasel goes down, you can bring in Amoongus to attract all the attention onto Amoongus so that Annihilate can get some powerful Rage Fists off. The other Pokemon on this team just give you some other modes. I think they're really cool. I was super excited to try out Terra Normal Arcanine with Justified so that you can get Justified boosts 
to give you plus four attack if you go for beat up into Arcanine. And then you can Terrastalize into a normal type and have plus four extreme speeds to sweep through the opponent's team. So that's really cool. I really like this Pokemon and I just like having a second mode there. And then you also have Fluttermane. If you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> but this Pokemon's also really supported by the other Pokemon on the team. Like a Helping Hand Sneasel next to a Fluttermane means you're going to be putting out a ton of damage. I've got Substitute on my set because it's very fast. It's max speed timid and you can substitute on potential sucker punches from Xian Pao and stuff. I like that set, but some people like to run Moonblast. So that's the team. Try it out if you want. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more cool strategies. I've actually got a list of them that I want to try out. That's going to be all for today. All that's left to be said is I've been through, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.